Hello, I would be sim simulating a simple uh, freight forwarding business scenario using any logic. I would request you all to pause the video and take a look at this problem right now. Alright, I've already built the solution for this scenario and I'll explain the components used and how I've configured it. So to start off, I've used the source object and a sync object for the truck arrival and the exit. And to represent each dock, I've used a service object and linked it to a resource pool. Okay, now we have to model the truck routing. So according to the problem, it first takes uh, the empty dock. With, uh, and if there is a tie between two empty docks, it takes a higher number dock. So to model this, we use the select output 5 object and take advantage of its um, top-down condition check. And here we just check first for dock 3, if it is empty, if it, it goes there, if it then if we go and check dock 2 and dock 1. So if there is a tie, uh, hence because of the top down condition check, it takes a higher number dock anyway. Okay, now we model the next condition, second condition, wherein it says that if, the, if all the docks are busy, then the truck takes the dock with minimum number of trucks waiting. And if there is a tie again, it takes the dock with, the lower, with starting from the lowest number. So we again make use of the select 5 object. In this case, we just check if um, the, the queue size of service dock 1 is less than that of 2 and if it is less than that of 3, if this is true, it takes service dock 1. And in the second condition, we check if, it, if 2 is less than 3. And the default output, as you see in the flowchart, has been given to uh, service dock 3 over here. Okay, now we have to collect some statistics. Uh, for example, the time spent in the system and the time spent in the various queues. To collect the time spent in the system, we have we always have to create an agent type, which is over here. And why is this to be done? Because there are several trucks coming into the system, and the time spent for each truck is going to be different. So, so by with the L any logic's default entity type, it's not possible for us to collect the mean time spent by all the trucks. So that's why we created an uh, agent type of type truck. So once we create the entity type of type type truck, we have to add some parameters. So here we create two parameters. So when the truck entered the system with this parameter and when the truck entered its particular queue. Once we create the agent type of type truck, we have to configure the um, source object in such a way that it generates uh, entities of type truck. How do we do this? So uh, we have to select the agent type of type truck. Initially it would have been new entity. Once we select this, we have to uh, type this, enter this particular code in the on exit section. It means that whenever the entity exits the source, it enters the system. So at this point of time, we capture the cu current simulated time. Apart from this, we also have to do certain other configurations and reserves that is as specified in the problem sheet, the inter-arrival time and the rate is defined by inter-arrival time. Now we have to capture the, the time when the truck enters the queue, so that is in the service dock. So what we have to do here is we have to um, give agent dot parameter enter queue for the time. That means as soon as the truck enters the queue, we capture the time here. And also for the service dock, we have to do some other uh, slight configurations. That is, since it is assigned to a resource pool, we have to link the particular resource pool to the queue. And we have to enter the delay time for each queue as given in the problem sheet. We have all these statistics added, uh, objects added, and we have to capture time. How, do, how, are we, how are we going to do that? So for example, let's start with the timing system. So this is equal to the... Uh, entire time spent by a particular truck in the system that is from the time it, start, it enters the system till the time it exit, exits. So to do this we go to the exit and here we enter this line of code that is as soon as it enters the exit we capture the current simulated time and then we subtract this time from the time which we captured as soon as it, as it entered the system that is over here in the source. Now to capture the time for the various queues, so what we do is we go to the service dock one and here we are going to time, so there is an on enter delay, so there is a queue embedded in the service, there is a delay object, so as soon as it enters the queue, we capture the time over here 
and as soon as it exits the queue and enters the delay that's when it starts unloading so here what we do is so we type in the particular statistics object dot add and we subtract the time over here as soon as it enters the on enter delay and we subtract it from the time as soon as it enters the queue we do the same we enter the same code for all to the other two queues as well and then we um, set the simulation time to 20,000 minutes and we run the simulation. Now I'm going to run the simulation and I'm going to show you the result of the simulation. So 2,193 trucks have entered the system, 2,174 have exited the system and so some of them are still in the system as it shows, as it is shown over here, 6 are waiting in the queue, 5 are waiting in the queue and it can be seen that each resource dot has been well utilized over 90% and here you see some of the observations of the time in system statistics, time in queue statistics, and all these things. So this is the output of one iteration of the simulation. So as per the problem, we need to do 10 replications of this, which we are now going to do in the parameter, parameter variation experiment. So now we create the parameter variation experiment. So what exactly is this? Is that now that you've, you've seen the output of the first iteration we create 10 replicates of the same experiment which we did each iteration of 20,000 minutes and we are going to collect the mean of the statistics collected in each of the in each replicate so this is to show that there is no um, unexpected behavior which is leading to sudden change in the timings of the system and yeah here in this we are again collect the mean of the time in system, dot utilization, queue length, and the waiting time of each truck. And the other small configurations which we have to do is to check the model time which is in minutes, and check the parameter variation experiment. And yeah, also before that we have to give the stop time of 20,000 minutes, and we need to pick a random seed. We don't want to do the same experiment 10 times and take the average. And we also have to give the replication. Um, and we have to fix it to 10. And we also have to write some code to collect the statistics. So this is the parameter variation level and the uh, other level which in which we did the simulation experiment is called the root level. So we take the value from the root level and add it to the statistics object in the parameter variation level. So for the resource doc, we use a utilization function for the mean. And for the service object, we go to the sees and to the queue and to the stat size and we get the mean and for the waiting time we directly access the statistics object and we get the mean so we take take the mean uh, yeah we run the parameter variation for 10 samples and this is the execution and we get the values for 10 replicates so this is how we do the simulation for the simple business scenario. Thank you very much. And yeah, before that, uh, this these values can be used to take certain business decisions. Say for example, if you want to play around with an extra doc, you can see how the values change. If you want to increase the resource for a particular queue and you want to convert it to money, you can always do that. And so yeah, so many business decisions can be take, taken based on the simulation runs which you do. You can foresee uh, a particular business process right now even without implementing it and it will i believe this is a very useful tool thank you very much